The 8th of May 2022 was an important day in my life. For the first time in human history, I managed to beat Super Mario 64 with all 120 stars while fully blindfolded the entire way through. This run was a breakthrough for not only myself, but the community in general. Things that were previously considered as impossible were now suddenly looking much more doable. And especially in my case, this run marked much more than just an achievement. It was the beginning of a personal new journey as well. The start of breaking every single blindfolded world record in Super Mario 64. Let us talk a bit about this pretty personal story of mine and Super Mario 64. About motivation, goals, ambitions and most importantly a story of speedrunning history. And if you want to be part of this history, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now. Be quick, it's a speedrun after all. The 120 star run marked my first world record on the blindfolded leaderboards since the end of 2019, when nobody started playing the game and absolutely destroyed every category on the leaderboards. We will look at 120 star a tiny bit later, so let us first focus on the background that is needed to understand all of the newest world records. Let's take a closer look at the leaderboards at that point in time. First, there is the most popular category, 16 star, where we have to beat the game with some easy glitches like MIPS clip and BLJs. On August 16th in 2019, I set my last world record in that category after a brutal grind. My final time was a 38 minute and 58 second run. The sub 40 was all I thought was possible at that point. But little did I know, as just a few weeks afterwards, on September 9th in 2019, a new player came into our ranks. This player was nobody, and nobody was insanely good at the game. Without much effort, he took down my record and improved the world record all the way to a 24 minute time in the span of a few months. Nobody did not stop there though, he rather focused on taking down the current 70 star world record as well. The record at that time was held by Katoon24 with an incredible time of 2 hours and 18 minutes and believe me or not, nobody absolutely destroyed that world record as well. In his very first 70 star run, he managed to get a time of only 1 hour and 36 minutes with his crazy fast strategies and knowledge of the game. An improvement of more than half an hour compared to the previous world record. Nobody could believe the skill of this player. And honestly, for me it was pretty crushing. As one of the only active blindfolded Mario runners at the time, I pretty much lost hope of ever being competitive at this game again. The difference in skill was just so insanely huge that I believed nobody would ever beat nobody again. The biggest difference was the amount of visual experience with the game. Nobody was a really, really good player in visual speedruns when he started out blindfolded as well. Even afterwards, he started to set top times in zero star, and even to this day holds the world record in 10 times DDD skip, where you perform the hardest trick in the game 10 times in a row. And he was not done with blindfolded speedruns at that point. Nobody continued to improve his times further. His final 16 star world record would clock in at 23 minutes and 48 seconds, and his 70 star world record would go as low as 1 hour hour and 26 seconds. But then, in 2021, he stopped. It was apparent that he could push these categories even further, but whatever the reason was, he stopped playing Super Mario 64 entirely. He continued to do a few visual speedruns and post some blindfolded strats on Twitter for the next year, but that was about it. I actually never got around to asking him for the reason that he stopped playing and would still be really curious, but my assumption is that he got busy with life and moved on with the game and his hobby. I personally tried my best to keep myself entertained with the game, but keeping up the motivation to practice and get better in blindfolded was really really difficult. You need to know that running and practicing for blindfolded speedruns takes a lot of effort and time. Like, really, a lot. And blindfolded speedrunning was a really huge part of my life at that point, so losing my motivation for Mario 64 was a hard hit. Luckily though, it was exactly around that time in 2020 to 2021 when blindfolded speedruns got a huge popularity boost due to some viral videos and performances at Games Done Quick. I was fortunate enough to showcase both 16 star and 70 star in both Summer and Awesome Games Done Quick 2021 consecutively. I started slowly building a community on Twitch and, next to some other blindfolded projects, did some speedruns of Mario just to stay entertained. I was thinking of ways to somehow, even if I cannot beat nobody, still bring some innovation into the game, and especially route some new strategies, which is what I always loved about blindfolded speedrunning the most. That's also where the whole idea of attempting blindfolded one star for the first time came into my life. I routed and practiced all the new tricks like LBLJ and SBLJ for the first time, and then 
On 17th February 2021, I finished the world first blindfolded one star run in SM64 with a time of 25 minutes and 55 seconds, which people celebrated a lot, but also found very amusing because even if I beat the game with 15 stars less than nobody, I was still slower than him. And reading comments like that was all fun and games of course, but it still did sting somewhere deep inside. To make things even worse, grinding 1 star and SPJ severely hurt my hands and even though I finished one run, I could not and did not even want to grind it much further. Right after that, I was grinding 70 star again to prepare for some marathons. And well, 70 star is probably the toughest category mentally because of its length and not being allowed to make any mistakes for such a long period of time. I struggled severely with motivation and got really frustrated close to every single stream with the game. Oh boy, these runs are so exhausting, I swear. I need to... Well, what should I do besides practicing more? I guess I just need to practice more. It was clear that I didn't have the best time with the game and trying so desperately to improve hurt me much more than it did good. But it was around that time that I also realized something extremely important. And it is probably one of the most important lessons that I have learned in my 7 years of blindfolded speedrunning now. I just stopped caring too much. Simply blindly chasing world records and constantly having this being the best is the most important thing mentality. You know, the whole if I cannot achieve this and that, why even try thing. Being focused on self opposed challenges and barriers one wants to break is important for a general grind set and drive to improve. But for me, that didn't really work well. For me, the most important thing with this hobby was to have fun finding new strategies, new routes and ideas, and in terms of actually just speedrunning, mostly self-improvement. At the end of the day, maybe there are a few people who truly care that I got the new personal best. But even if it's not a world record, I figured out that what is so much more important to me is that I personally feel like I have improved, that my strategies actually work in consistent ways, and that I can be proud to have pushed through the hardship of learning and not giving up. So around that time, I simply decided to not really care too much about world records anymore and wanting to be the best. I rather just wanted to improve at the game at my own pace and most importantly, have fun with my community and this hobby of mine. And that's where we come back to May 2022, when I got back my place on the leaderboards with 120 star. I practiced for this run for more than a whole year. I think it was around one year and five months total that I spent literally every day routing, practicing, memorizing and playing the game. Of course it was exciting because it would mean the world's first 120 star completion blindfolded, but I honestly just had an absolute blast during the entire time learning it. 70 stars of the route were already present, as I have run the category before, so I could just reuse a lot of my old strategies there. But trying to figure out the remaining 50 stars was the real challenge. All the 100 coin stars, all the incredibly difficult and precise stars that did not find place in 70, all of that was incredibly tough to figure out. You can imagine that getting 70 stars is just barely possible with all the faster stars in the game. But then we are running out of options. You can literally imagine that every star after the 70 star mark rises exponentially in difficulty and length. And it all peaks at the last 5 stars or so, which alone are probably more difficult than a whole 70 star run itself. Most notable 100 coin stars like LLL and DDD 100. So, to me, it was an incredibly rewarding and fulfilling feeling when I actually managed to beat 120 star. I really felt that this is what I always searched for. Difficult routing challenges and not simply grinding runs all day without thinking about what I do twice. The whole routing process made me appreciate small details of the movement, the camera and the environment so much more within the game. I learned so much during this year of 120 star and I believe it could be especially seen in my ability to optimize strategies and find consistent ways of doing them, as well as my improved mentality on speedrunning in general. This is also the time where my good friend Handyman comes into play. You see, on September 13th in 2021, a person in my community finished learning the blindfolded 16 star route. That person was Handyman. He finished his first run in 52 minutes, which was a really good time and he was the third person in the world to get a sub hour run with that. But Handy didn't stop there. Over the course of the next year, he improved a lot. He got PB after PB until he finally, on May 28th, 2022, only a few days after my 120 star run, bobbed my old 16 star personal best with a time of 27 minutes and 34 seconds. I am sure it was one of Handy's major goals to pass my PB at the time. And honestly, I couldn't be more happy about it. As I said earlier, I kind of gave up on grinding 16 stars seriously after nobody 
these insane accomplishments. But Handy? Handy wanted more. Handy didn't give up after he beat my personal best. He was determined to grind even further with the goal of dethroning nobody from the leaderboard. And so, he got faster and faster times, until his personal best was only 24 minutes and 52 seconds long. Only one more minute behind nobody. I was mostly busy playing Breath of the Wild blindfolded at the time, but specifically when Handy asked me about some new ideas for 16 star that would give him the extra edge to beat nobody, I took a day off and started up Super Mario 64 again. I remember speed routing a couple of new ideas for DDD within like a single day, including the side flip dive ending and the new backstab strategy. And seeing Handy's grind in combination with how fast I could find new and better strategies, it finally hit me. Nobody was not invincible. Handy surely will succeed in beating nobody's time and probably, if I would really try, I could too. As I say, after 120 star I was extremely confident with my ability to route and optimize stars, so I decided to properly look into 16 star once more, just to see what we could possibly achieve with more optimized blindfolded strategies. And the results were astounding. New strategies like Bomb Clip in B.O.B., the visual long jump in the middle of Dark World, the new Bowser Drag strategy, a new consistent MIPS catch, an easy fire sea lava boost, and so much more. I basically improved every single stage and star in Super Mario 64 within a couple of days, and the new strategies were not only fast but also consistent. After a few days of running, my sum of best already reached a high 20 minute time, which would give me more than 3 minutes of leeway in mistakes to beat nobody's time. Both me and Handy did runs for a few weeks and basically raced to improve our times, until the 14th of July in 2022. Twenty three minutes and seventeen seconds. A new blindfolded sixteen star world record after more than three years of nobody's dominance. And the run had some mistakes as well, like a more than one minute time loss at BLJ's. Even so, it was enough. Changing my mindset and my general goals with this game made grinding so much less stressful, and it was actually a really fun change of pace after grinding 120 and 70 star before. Even so, I cannot emphasize enough how stressful it can be to run blindfolded SM64. Any mistake, and it's basically a reset at any given point in the run. I was really happy about this accomplishment, but to be completely honest, I would have loved to see Handy in that spot instead of me even more. He still continued grinding for a bit after this, and we even had some really fun ideas like racing 16 star and 2 player 1 controller blindfolded, but unfortunately he started getting problems with his PC and then soon after stopped playing entirely as well. For me, I started playing with the idea of optimizing 70 star again and tried to see how low the time could actually go there. I knew that beating the run of nobody was going to be even more difficult than his 16 star world record, as the consistency and speed in his strategies was absolutely insane. 70 is a long category, and to play blindfolded for one and a half hours without making major mistakes is really, really difficult. Not only that, but the run also contains run killing tricks like the penguin skip, which is a literally frame perfect input you need to make 17 minutes into the run, and if you don't get it, you lose more than a minute for each reattempt. But wait, Bubsia, something doesn't add up here. You said you didn't care about grinding world records and stuff anymore, but now you are literally trying to beat all of nobody's records. What is up with that? That is very true, but I never really looked at it this way mindset-wise. It would have been totally okay for me to give up 70 star after I reached my peak or lose the fun in running, even if I didn't get close to nobody. I think that was actually the major part why I usually got burned out after one week of running 70 star at best. I just wanted to see how far I can personally go, and my community wanted to see more runs, so these kind of grinds just go hand in hand for both of these sides. Anyways. I have been on and off with 70 star for a long time, because it also acted as good practice for 20 star when I did it. My personal best was a 1 hour and 44 minute time, when I started to go back to it in 2023. And yeah, same as with 16 star, I sat down and did what I could do best. Optimize, strategize, find new routes, implement consistent and fast strategies. And after that, it all happened really, really fast. In the span of only 6 days, I improved my personal best from 1 hour 44 minutes to 1 hour 40 minutes, 
then 1 hour 35 minutes, then 1 hour 28 minutes. I was only 2 minutes behind nobody at this point, and the potential of my strategies was clear. My sum of best dropped down to a possible 1 hour and 16 minute time, which is faster than I ever thought it could possibly get. And then, only 2 days after my last personal best, this happened. I entered the last Bowser fight at 1 hour and 22 minutes at the timer, which is 3 minutes faster than nobody did. Unfortunately, I missed a throw, which means that I had to reset the entire fight and lost around 1 minute and a half of time. I knew I was on a good pace, but I did not know that it could potentially mean a new world record if I didn't miss again. A new world record in 1 hour and 25 minutes, only barely faster than nobody's run. I was happy, but not really satisfied yet. A missed Bowser throw is always a punch in the gut after playing perfectly for more than an hour while blindfolded. But not only that, the run had several time losses, as you can probably tell by my sum of best being close to 10 minutes faster than my personal best. To this day, I believe 70 star is the most unoptimized blindfolded category, but the problem with it is its length and insane difficulty. Getting a time even close to the 1 hour 30 minute mark is so incredibly hard, not only in terms of gameplay, but also in terms of mentality. As I said, any major mistake is basically a reset, and the run being so long makes things really really bad. For someone like me, who only speedruns and streams after work for 2 or 3 hours a day, resetting a run after 1 hour in tippy or so usually means that I didn't have time to do another attempt. It's not like 16 star, where you fail BLJs and can just laugh it off because you can get there again in 15 minutes. That was and still is my main beef with 70 star, but I feel like I will eventually still come back to it, as I do believe that I can still push it much further. At that time though, I was done with the category and lost my fun grinding it very quickly after this personal best, as I couldn't consistently get close to it anymore. So, without a second thought or any regret, I just simply stopped. Again, no point in grinding if it's no fun. I would rather spend my time otherwise with other cool blindfolded projects. And since I now kind of circled through all of my old categories and improved them with my new mentality and gameplay skill, it was kind of natural that my next target was once again the dreaded 1 star. My world record has been beaten by Handyman in April 2022, with a time of only 16 minutes and 50 seconds. Handy's run was insane. After some initial struggles with the LBLJ, he beats Dark World without any issues, then proceeds to get an SBLJ on only the third attempt, gets a good Fire C, perfect BLJs, and then a perfect sky. The only major mistake in his run was a missed Bowser throw, which meant around a 1 minute time loss. I was pretty scared of running this category again, mostly because of the hand paints I got from it last time, but this time I had a much better approach to it, and it was not all there was to it. The one star grind was kind of just a facade, or a time filler if you want, as my real goal was actually to beat the last category that has never been done before blindfolded after all, zero star. My master plan kind of went like this. I first learned a lot about the trick required to beat the game with zero stars, DDD skip. It is one of the most precise things to do in the game, and especially blindfolded, it seemed absolutely impossible. Getting this trick down while blindfolded means getting the luck and precision of multiple frame-perfect inputs back to back to back. I consulted DDD skip scientist Cosma, and after a few weeks of offline practice, I finally announced my plan to the public. People called me crazy, but the most important part for now was my new approach with the required BLJs. When I talked with Cosma and told him about my fear that my hands would start to hurt again, he said one sentence that meant so incredibly much to me. If you hurt your body while playing, you're simply not doing it right. It might sound simple and I'm sure Cosma didn't mean anything extremely meaningful behind it, but it resonated so incredibly much with me for some reason. For years, I've been mashing hardcore in a lot of instances, like the LBLJ for maximum time save. And even long jumps, for example, are something I always mashed out because it guarantees the most reliable outcome in blindfolded speedruns. But if it hurts doing so, it surely cannot be right, can it? Why not take a 5 second time loss and mash in a much slower speed? Why not reroute strategies to not mash long jumps, but rather time them with the music? 
The same goes for SPLJ. You can mash your thumbs out on this trick to get insane speeds like Suiji does with his ultimate SPLJ, but it is by no means required. Why not just take a slower approach, mash in a much slower speed and then simply adjust the strategy for it? I was at first uncomfortable rerouting a strategy that was proven to work for years for the blindfolded SPLJ, but within literally two days or so, I already made a new strategy work even better, now with a slow mash. With these new strategies and the knowledge that I actively care for my hands with new strats, my confidence went absolutely through the roof. I followed a hybrid approach, doing 1 star runs if I get a fast SPLJ or if the DDD skip fails, and doing 0 star only if the SPLJ split is getting too slow. With that, I got tons of practice in, and got personal best after personal best. Within only 3 days, I improved my 24 minute time to a 90 minute time, then to an 18 minute time all the way to this run. <laughs> 15 minutes and 17 seconds. A new 1 star world record. And with that, a full leaderboard sweep of blindfolded Super Mario 64. I officially held all the world records now, but as I said, I was not done at all. I still wanted to add a 0 star run to this list, to expand even further on what is possible and what is not in terms of blindfolded Super Mario 64. And this 1 star world record also didn't stand for long. It seemed like I played better and better with every single day. In the following 3 weeks, I improved the world record another 3 times. First, a 15 minutes 17 second, then a 14 minutes 49 second, then a 14 minute 42 seconds. And then, finally, on December 8th, 2023, I got a 13 minute and 31 second time. The currently standing world record at the time of this video. The only thing that didn't seem to work was Zero Star. The DDD skip turned out to be such an incredibly precise trick, and I didn't even get close a single time, until I tried to change my strategy a bit on November 29th. It was around the 11th day of grinding SBLJ in runs, when this happened. Never mind. I didn't go neutral. I messed up the setup. No way! No way! I finally somehow managed to get through the elusive DDD wall. Unfortunately, I instantly got lost afterwards, and it took me around 20 minutes to enter Fire Sea. The thing is, if you die in Fire Sea, you will be pushed back out in front of DDD again, and the run is literally dead. So I had to put together all of my focus that was left after such a dreadful mistake of getting lost and enter Fire Sea. I died in Fire Sea. And not only that, but I died in one of the most ridiculous and stupid ways possible, by celebrating too early. I literally didn't hear the rollout audio cue and thought that I am good to go. But well, lesson learned I guess. It then took me another 10 whole days of attempts until I got past DDD for the second time. No, 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 no. Back up, back up, back up. Back up, back up, back up. Oh. 
Yes, dude! <laughs> Sweet <me! laughs> For the fans, dude! <laughs> Never mind, it's, uh, it was just, just a prank, bro. Two one-ups, two one-ups, right? Faking. World first zero star blindfolded dude. Let's go! <laughs> yes! <laughs> and there it is, the world's first blindfolded zero star run of Super Mario 64, a category that was quite literally thought of as impossible by everyone, including myself. But I did it. Within the span of one year, in 2023, I improved every single world record in Super Mario 64. Now, was it because I'm particularly good at the game or anything? I really don't think so. It was a combination of a new mentality towards speedrunning, having lots of fun with the game, a ton of practice and dedication, improving the ability to focus on details while optimizing and routing, of course also getting better at the game, not denying that. It was a community effort with new ideas, it was motivation from fellow runners like Handyman. It was the viewers that watched my videos and streams. It was all the support that I got from all of you. There is so much that went into making this possible and I feel incredibly humbled and thankful by all the support that I got throughout all these years. What is next to come, you might ask? Well, I honestly don't know yet. I'm grinding 16 stuff for the world first sub 20 time right now and the world record has been pushed as low as a 21 minute time at the time of this recording. Maybe I'll go back to 70 star. Maybe I'll go back to 120 star. Maybe I will even leave the game for a while and focus entirely on Mario Odyssey any percent blindfolded. Only time can tell. I personally will keep doing what I do though. Having fun in my streams, finding joy in routing and optimizing stuff, and just grinding whatever category I feel like the most. Also making YouTube documentaries like this one about a hobby I love is something that I really enjoy these days and want to keep on doing. So leave me a like, subscribe and write a comment with some feedback for me. This, ladies and gentlemen, is my way of speedrunning. Thank you very much for watching and big shoutouts as always to my Patreons. Boris, Bob Farrell, Benlitz, Zeke's Many and King Roops. Thanks to all the other Patreons, YouTube subscribers, Twitch viewers and all the other people who interact with me in some way as well. I truly appreciate it and see you next time with more blindfolded awesomeness. Bye bye.